Hello again, everybody, and welcome to our talk here on gestational hypertension. This is going to be uh, one of the first, at least the first in sequence, uh, of uh, our talks on hypertension during pregnancy. I suggest that you watch this one first. Uh, I then go into preeclampsia, eclampsia, and HELP syndrome. So um, watch this one first, then go on to, uh, to those. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I very much thank all those of you uh, who have already stepped up to donate. Okay. So uh, this is the sort of spectrum, if you want to call it that, of hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. We are going to be focusing here on gestational hypertension, and we will make passing reference to chronic hypertension. And then, as mentioned, there are a number of other hypertensive disorders that will be covered in separate videos. All right, now when you have a woman who has an elevated blood pressure and she's pregnant, and this is something that we check at every visit, um, then you need to determine what the cause is. So the first question you ask yourself, well, first of all, you need to measure this twice. So you need to have two separate elevated blood pressure readings to really say that she has hypertension. Then the first thing you're gonna ask yourself is how far along is she? If she's less than 20 weeks along, then we're going to figure out if she's got protein in her urine. So we're going to get a urinalysis, or at the very least, a urine dipstick protein. If she has no proteinuria, or if it's um, you know just trace protein, then we diagnose it as chronic hypertension. It's actually not gestational hypertension yet. Um, if she does indeed have protein, then we know she has a chronic hypertension, but she also has a preeclampsia, or at least what's going to go on to be preeclampsia. So we call that preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. Now, if she's after 20 weeks gestation, again, we are going to do a, a urinalysis, check for protein. And if she has proteinuria, then we will diagnose it as preeclampsia. If she does not, if it's isolated hypertension after 20 weeks, gestational hypertension. And that's going to be what we're talking about here. Now, blood pressure is usually decreased in pregnancy. Yes, there is... Uh, a higher volume state in pregnancy. However, there is a decrease in systemic vascular resistance. And so the net is a decrease in blood pressure. Now the blood pressure will reach its nadir or the lowest point in the middle of the pregnancy, mid second trimester, and then it will start to come back up and it should get to baseline at some point in the late third trimester. Blood pressure during pregnancy should never be higher than the pre-pregnancy baseline, and hypertensive disorders are the leading cause of preterm delivery. Gestational hypertension is a sustained elevation of blood pressure, and when we talk about high blood pressure here, we're talking about over 140 systolic or over 90 diastolic, and this has to be after 20 weeks of gestation and there has to be an absence of proteinuria. If you have hypertension and proteinuria after 20 weeks, that would be preeclampsia. Uh, all right, so if you have a high blood pressure reading, and this may come up on step two or even step three, high blood pressure reading, the very first thing to do, you might be thinking, oh, got to get that urine protein. No. Your next step is to repeat the blood pressure in about four to six hours. Um, so if then you get a second hypertensive reading, then you can make the diagnosis. So that's important to be aware of um, because that can be an easy question that could confuse you or that you could get wrong. It's very important to distinguish gestational hypertension from chronic hypertension. Chronic hypertension will show up before 20 weeks of gestation. And it's very important to distinguish gestational hypertension from preeclampsia, and it's going to be the proteinuria that's going to help you do that. Risk factors for gestational hypertension are multifold. The biggest one is having gestational uh, hypertension, well, having this 
be your first pregnancy. So in other words, you're having your first pregnancy. Um, so if you're a prima gravida, that is your highest risk for gestational hypertension. If you go that first pregnancy and you don't develop gestational hypertension, the likelihood of developing in a subsequent pregnancy is quite a bit less. Now, to work up gestational hypertension, what we're really doing is we're doing a workup essentially for preeclampsia and HELP syndrome. And so, you know, it may be useful for you to watch this video, watch those, and then come back to this one. Uh, but what we're going to do is a urinalysis, mainly looking for protein. We're going to get a CBC with smear, primarily looking for a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. We're going to get a BMP, particularly looking for the creatinine and the uh, blood urine nitrogen. We're going to get LFTs, looking for enzymes, and we could get a PT, PTT, but it's not mandatory. And what we expect to see is everything completely normal. Everything is completely normal in gestational hypertension. It is isolated high blood pressure. Now our next step, once we confirm gestational hypertension and the absence of proteinuria, is to get a fetal ultrasound. And because we diagnose this at 20 weeks or later, we can go ahead and get a transabdominal ultrasound. Remember in the first trimester, we get a transvaginal ultrasound. And then after that, we can get a transabdominal ultrasound. Women appreciate it. Nobody likes having things put up their vagina. Um, transabdominal is just much easier. The treatment for gestational hypertension is oral labetalol. Now, there are other drugs that could be used, uh, nifedipine, uh, alpha-methyl dopa, hydralazine. They're all safe in pregnancy, but the superior agent is labetalol taken orally. Now, you can try lifestyle modifications first. There's mixed evidence, uh, but on USMLE, they will probably expect you to know that labetalol is the treatment of choice. If the patient has severe gestational hypertension, and that's systolic over 160 or diastolic over 110, either or, um, then you can give either IV labetalol, uh, PO nifedipine, uh, and you can give uh, magnesium sulfate. So what we would do here is we would give either of these, so IV labetalol or oral nifedipine, and then we would also give magnesium sulfate on top of one of those agents. This whole time, you need to be vigilant for signs of mild or severe preeclampsia because sometimes you can develop preeclampsia after gestational hypertension is diagnosed. So you can go from gestational hypertension, no proteinuria, and then develop proteinuria later. Um, and so obviously the number one thing that you would see would be proteinuria. And so we will be checking the protein, the urine protein at every visit with a dipstick. Uh, but you want to also be uh, vigilant for these symptoms because these are suggestive of developing a severe preeclampsia. And then obviously your first step is going to be checking a urine protein. What do we do as far as uh, management? So beyond the medication, we need to determine a delivery plan. So if she is less than 37 weeks and she's stable, and this is how most gestational hypertensive patients are, then we just do ex expectant management, continue on her medications, and um, if um, we need to deliver her sooner, then we would give steroids, um, but typically we don't need to do that. So expectant management as long as she's stable. Now, if she's 37, less than 37 weeks and she has indications for delivery, and that I put right here so you can read that, then what we would do is we would consider inducing delivery at that point. If she is less than 32 weeks pregnant, then we will need to give steroids. Um, so dexamethasone, betamethasone. Um, there's some disagreement, uh, sort of discrepancies in the literature as to whether, you know, less than 32 weeks, less than 34 weeks. If you're between 32 and 34 weeks, you could just go ahead and give the steroids or you can get a amniocentesis looking for fetal lung maturity. And remember, that's that less than sphingomyelin ratio. If she's more than 37 weeks, we just go ahead and induce delivery. We can be rest assured that the fetal lungs are mature. Complications, uh, preterm delivery is the big one. 
And that's just because she may necessitate it, not because it would be spontaneous so much. Okay, um, now this is just a cheat sheet for the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. Um, you need to know how far along she is and whether there's proteinuria. So to recap, gestational hypertension is a sustained elevation of blood pressure after 20 weeks gestation in the absence of proteinuria in a normally normotensive patient. The further workup should be a UA, CBC, BMP, liver function tests, and PTPTT. Some people add on to this uric acid. You don't need to do that. Be vigilant for progression to preeclampsia, eclampsia, or HELP syndrome. The treatment is labetalol. That's given orally. Um, labetalol, hydralazine, or oral nifedipine may be considered in patients with severe hypertension, and delivery should take place at 37 weeks or if there are indications.